quickly. All right, hey guys, welcome to Rotor Ride. And as you can see, Sean has put together yet another weird freaking drone. <laughs> this one, this is probably your biggest creation yet. This is ring drone, guys. I don't know if you guys can even see this on camera. It is so big. I mean, this is, <laughs> what is this a five foot diamond? I'm six feet tall. So this is maybe a five foot diameter ring yep. that you've made. I first started out with a 10 foot diameter version that I wanted to build. Mm -hmm. I cut all the G10 on the CNC mill and I had it all laid out in the shop and it was just a little bit too flimsy. I didn't think it was gonna hold its own support. Maybe 10 foot diameter is a little too big. So we'll make it five foot diameter. You know, it's about the same size as a multi-GP gate. We should be able to hit that, right? Yeah, so that's the whole thing. Make a drone shaped like a giant ring, it basically becomes a flying dive gate. Flying dive gate. And how yep. sweet would that be to dive a drone through a drone? So we took this with us down to Barnwell, South Carolina at GTI, Government Training Institute, the site of Rotor Riot Rampage, our FPV freestyle festival that's happening this May, May 15th and 16th. And while we were there for our site inspection, we broke out Ring Drone to see if we could have some of the best pilots in the world do some crazy maneuvers around it. So this whole thing started because we saw Brooks Coleman, a member of our Rotor Riot Facebook group, thought of this idea, Ring Drone, and has been working to make it happen. So you reached out to him, right? Yeah, I, I reached out to Brooks and I've been chatting with him and talking to him about his progress and seeing how he's doing. I thought it was really cool and I wanted to kind of do it myself. And I kind of asked him if it would be cool if I tried to attempt to make one myself also. I actually started with these aluminum bars. I wanted to make something that was extremely lightweight, but also durable. And I had all these aluminum bars left over from back in the David Vendistel tricopter days. Jumped into CAD and I started CNC in a couple pieces. I cut them out of G10 on my CNC mill, slapped it together. So essentially what you've ended up with is aluminum bars held together with angled pieces that you cut out of G10. Mm -hmm. How'd you mount the motor? This is also yeah, a G10 motor Yeah, so I also made mount. a G10 motor mount, yep, okay. and uh, just happened to work out. It turned into like an octocopter type design. So I is that what this really is? Like as far as the flight controller is concerned, yep. does it just think this is an octocopter? The flight controller just thinks it's an octocopter, how, that's it. Like how is this even wired up? Where is the drone actually? So the flight controller is actually right here. Okay, so in here. Not in the center where you would normally see it. So there's a pod back here and this is essentially the drone, right? Right, there's so the flight controller. So you've got your flight controller, you've got your <laughs> air unit, your FPV camera. Yep. I see one four and one. So yep. there's one board here that can drive four of the motors, but there's, you said eight motors total? Eight motors, that's so right. So what else? So on the other okay. side of the Complete board. Complete other end here. We've got another four and one ESC over here. Gotcha. You have to get the power to the front ESC yep. as well. The power had to be ran. What I actually ended up doing was running two separate batteries. Okay. So I've got one on this side, oh, one on that okay. side but I didn't want one to drain faster than the other, so I did run a power lead around just to oh, try to, to keep, keep them the same keep voltage. Keep them in balance, right, yeah. okay. If this can fly, this kind of proves the, the theory that the flight controller can be anywhere, right? Yeah. Because the flight controller is not in the center. Yeah. It doesn't matter on what point you take the measurement, tilting is tilting, yaw is yawing, it shouldn't matter. But I can definitely see it not working out 100% to the theory because this is certainly not a a rigid body. There's, there's yeah. a lot of flex here. It was a little less flex before we broke it. <laughs> <laughs> it ended up being a lot harder than I expected to make it through. You think, dude, this is a, a five <laughs> foot ring. Again, I can't even fit it on camera. I dive through gaps like this big, okay? This should be easy. Should be super easy. It was not easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Dang! Oh! It's the left! Uh, oh. 
Does it work though? Yo, I hit, I nicked that thing like eight times and it was fine. Great, it was awesome. Yeah. Great job, Sean. I did reach out to our fellow teammates, Josh and Nurk, and they tried to help me. Mm -hmm. One of the major problems we had with it is it wouldn't yaw at all. I didn't know why. I was like, why isn't this thing yawing? Is it because the flight controller is off-centered? I, I don't know what it is. And they said, maybe the props just aren't big enough. Right, like, I mean, if you think about okay. how big this thing is yeah, and it's just crazy. how much rotational inertia it has. You actually had a really cool idea. Yeah, so my idea, my kind of singular contribution to this was <laughs> to try to solve the yaw problem by angling some of the motors. So what a drone does when it yaws, all the props that spin clockwise, when you try to yaw, it will spool those up and spinning those up will cause the drone to rotate counterclockwise to conserve its uh, angular momentum. So my thinking was you could angle the motors. So in this example, the motors that are, are spinning clockwise, if you angle them so that those are thrusting in a way that would create counterclockwise thrust, you would amplify the effect. You don't just have angular momentum rotating, you actually have angled thrust. Does that make sense? What he said, science. It right. worked. No. Why? Guys, I'm gonna go back through that opening right here. <laughs> They're doing great, Alex. Everybody else kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm just gonna study. Yeah! There you go. This is awesome. <laughs> oh, 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 and Magnus, it's done. <laughs> it was barely flying straight. No, it was flying good. He had to try to roll oh, it. Come on, I had to try and roll it. Uh, <laughs> Just bend it back. All come the on. G10 pieces are fine. We can, we can bend it back. All right, grab that side. <laughs> Wait, can we unplug it first before we... Oh yeah, it's probably smart. All right, just pull. <laughs> Look at that. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at it. It's, it's I All mean, right, it'll fly. That, that, uh, that one's seriously meant Whatever. Let's so just test time it, test time it. Happens. Flying without one prop. But the ultimate was at Rampage. There is a like 125 foot smokestack that you can dive down. It's a sweet dive. You got to watch out for the guide wires. And we were thinking, <laughs> dude, we've got to get the flying dive gate at the top of the smokestack. Go through the ring and dive, dive the stack. Down the stack. Yes. So you're gonna fly at FPV now for the first time, Sean? I'm gonna try to fly at FPV for the first time. <laughs> This thing's still working. If you guys want a chance to dive through a flying ring gate, we are gonna be bringing this thing out to Rampage. Again, that's happening in May. So if you guys are coming to Rampage, we will get this thing up in the air and see how many people can dive through it before, before it's broken. It ultimately <laughs> just... <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you think Sean made something awesome, make sure to hit the like button, show him some love. We had a blast. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell. Don't forget the bell. We'll see you next time on Rotor Rides. We're gonna hula hoop. We're gonna hula hoop. We're gonna hula hoop.